sir. All right, thank you. Um, hi, my name's Nathan. I am a senior in the English department. I should be getting my bachelor's this spring. <laughs> Unless you flunk the senior course paper. Yeah, that's all, yeah. okay. uh, I have also applied to graduate school in a, an MLS, that's a master's in liberal studies, as an e-learning professional. Uh, basically today I'm going to talk to you about resumes and e-portfolios. I'm doing an independent study with Dr. Dan Kumala using e-portfolios and learning matrices. You don't need to worry about learning matrices. We're just going to talk about e-portfolios today. Um, I've also traveled to Las Vegas with the Vice President of Global Sales of this company, Epsilon, and helped him present to the University of Southern Nevada, and I assisted the President of Epsilon in Portland, Oregon in 2011 in presenting at the AASCU conference. Um, E-portfolio, they tell you to get a resume. Get a resume, you need it for employers so they can know your education, your work history, your experience, and why you're qualified for a job, right? An e-portfolio is essentially a resume on steroids. So, <laughs> what I've been doing is working with Epsilon. There's plenty of other e-portfolios out there. Maybe we'll Google after this e-portfolio and try to find different ones. But I'm just going to show you mine real quick. Nathan, because of your experience, um, we talked a little bit about this and then I ran out of time on Monday. Um, based on your experience, is the organization of the resume like crucial? I know it's flexible. You have to have like the home address and all that kind of good junk and education at the beginning. But then the rest of it, does it depend on where you, your strengths are, like organizations, awards, I uh, think jobs? It, I think the best thing to lead with would be objectives. What your objective with it? Because the resume I have in here is for graduate school. I sent Mrs. Wilson a resume over winter break, and I used an online resume wizard. And they said well, we're gonna have to charge you like 20 bucks for this resume if you want to use it. So I basically copy and pasted everything into Word and then emailed it to her. But then when I did my resume for my e-portfolio, um, I decided to do it as if I were doing it for grad school. And this is my e-portfolio. Well, this is the main page of my e-portfolio. And the way Epsilon's ePortfolio works is it's a little like Facebook. You've got your email, uh, you can personalize kind of a profile picture, you have some of your interests, you can even make notes like on Facebook, like, oh, I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to uh, give my presentation. Do we have any business majors in here? No. Uh, social work. Social work. Uh, zoology. Um, I don't think we're going to say base pathology. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, English, English okay. um, geoscience. Geoscience. So if you're going to be giving a presentation over speech path, yeah. if you're going to be giving a presentation over some of your work in zoology, uh, some of your findings in studying animals, you post down here. Oh yeah, I, you know. Then it'll get it to the people in your Epsilon group. So that's one reason I like Epsilon. It's really just an e-portfolio. It's also a social network for your e-portfolio. It helps shop you around. It helps make you look like really a product to employers, which is one thing Epsilon's big about is not just education, but what happens to you after your education. It's also for employers and professionals. Um, then over here you have your different uh, parts. Here you can have publications if you've been published anywhere, publications you like. If you have a blog, if you don't, I probably should. Uh, certifications this is actually a really interesting aspect of Epsilon. Uh, I don't know why the pictures always take so long. I want to talk to somebody at Epsilon about that when I get the chance. But here I've got my Sigma Tau Delta certificate and my certificate in journalism. And what, what I really like about this is how this helps kind of say, instead of just saying, oh, I have this, show people, look, here, shove it in their faces. I have this, look. So that's one great aspect of an e-portfolio. Um, over here you have showcase. This is where you can take things, and here I have my uh, feasibility study from last semester. You're all working on your feasibility studies now. I assume that you're just nice and calm and relaxed about it too, aren't you? They're from yeah. Student Day. Oh, really? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, isn't that cool? Um, right now, this is the only thing I have in my showcase because I want to leave it open for grad graduate school because I'm going to be doing a lot of work that's going to be applicable to my future in graduate school. But if, let's say, you were an ag business major like Jeremy, mm -hmm. and you gave a presentation over food costs and uh, production costs and 
processing costs, you could put your PowerPoint or your paper or your report or whatever in here, and then employers could look at the work you've done in school. So it's kind of like, even if you can't get an internship, they could still see what kind of work you're capable of through your ePortfolio. And then uh, share it would be just sharing certain sites, content, anything that you think is interesting in the field. So if I found an online journal article about e-learning that I wanted to share, I could put it in there. And then you can build your own resume. Um, this is my resume I've built here in Epsilon, and I'll show you kind of how it works. You've got objective, uh, research and explore the potential of technology and e-learning to assist in advanced assessment education, my work history, won't get into that. Uh, education here, I can say, I haven't gotten it yet, but for the sake of filling things out, I have BA in English and a certificate in journalism, relevant experience, I was a tutor at the Writing Center, awards, uh, Dean's Honor Roll 2009, and of course you've got your references. So, and then even there's some debate in, even in uh, career services, about whether you should list the references on your resume or e-portfolio, or just say, contact career services. What's your gut tell you to do? Given the fact that when you build your resume in Epsilon, they already have references as one of the um, one of the tabs already in there. I'll show you. All they, they start you out with just a core set, and you can keep adding new headlines and new tabs. So they already have references. So. I'd say put your references on there. It kind of, especially if you have the title of your reference and it's, let's say you have uh, Provost Gould as one of your references, it's going to say Larry Gould, Provost, for a State University. That's going to kind of say something about your academic achievements. Yep. Um, over here, though, another really cool aspect is you have quick links. And this can kind of show people things that you're interested in as well. And when you set up your quick links in this ePortfolio, they ask you to add a description, but for some reason, People who visit your ePortfolio can't read the description, so I want to talk to them about that as well and say, hey, what's the point? Because what I have here is Sigma Tau Delta. Oh, it's a, an international English honor society I belong to. Uh, Ask you is the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. I went to the 2011 conference and saw a lot of really cool things. And while I was there, I assisted the president of Epsilon, as I said, in a presentation. And I assisted Dr. Grimaldo in a presentation. I'm probably the only person working on their undergraduate to ever assist in a presentation at an ASCU conference, given that was the first year that they let any students go. There were only three of us there. So I really am proud of that. So I wanted to put that on there that, hey, I've done this. You know, but apparently they don't think that's important to show my descriptors. But when you go in, and one thing I really, since she's not having somebody from resume come and talk to you, I really want to spend a little bit of time on resumes and building one. So once this loads, any questions so far? No? What is the ASCU conference? ASCU, American Association of State Colleges and Universities. Oh, okay. And if anybody here Red Balloon Project, anybody heard about that? They're really emphasizing the Red Balloon Project. I, it's a really interesting story. I'd go into it, but <laughs> if you really want to know, just Google DARPA and mm. Red. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so when it starts out, building your uh, your resume using the resume wizard, and this is free. You don't have to pay for your resume in the portfolio. They give you all the all the utensils you need, uh, contact information, objective, work history, of course, and then I added in awards and relevant experience. And what you can do is you can actually use these trash cans, and if there's anything in there you don't want, trash it, take it out, and then you can go to add category. And then all of these are different parts of different little categories or headlines that you can add to your resume. So you can customize your resume easily without having to go up and look up, you know, Google, well, how do I write a resume? You go in here and they'll say, well, here's some things you can add. You're a member of this, add memberships. You've done community service and volunteering, add that. If you have any patents, you're like an inventor, add that. And I have this and this and this patented. It's Yes, me, it's much more efficient and knowledgeable. Uh, is it pretty user-friendly? Here and there. 
it has some kinks. That's one thing I'm working on with my independent study is uh, finding a lot of the problems within Epsilon and saying, hey guys, we've been troubleshooting. This needs to be fixed. So you got all that. Uh, and then this video, I'm shooting a video right now because I want to uh, add that to my ePortfolio. Okay, let's be honest. Are you shooting it or is your girlfriend shooting it? She's shooting it, yeah. I'm not let's really, not lie here. Okay. I'm not doing anything worse. I know. I'm sad. Um, another point that I have with career services, <coughs> uh, when they came in in your class, the individual who conducted the class said that objective wasn't important. And I think that it's very important you need a summary or something at the beginning of your resume to tell think, the future employer, this is what I want. Well, yeah, I think it's important because also there's different, I mean, what if you're filing a resume for graduate school, you're filing a resume for a job, uh, I don't know why you'd have to do this, but if you're filing a resume for a promotion, even, you know, this is why I'm filing this, this is why I wrote this resume, here's why I have this included in here, is why I have experience, uh, awards, patents, qualifications. Uh, but another thing is video. You can actually upload videos for people to watch that go on the cover. See here, I have a video. We won't watch it because it's that one. Uh, but people can go in and you can actually, one aspect we're going to work on in my independent study is doing a video resume which you basically make a minute to a minute and a half long video of you explaining your experience, what it taught you, your qualifications, your work history, your references, what you want to achieve, saying, I... It's a unique feature, I like that. Yeah, you can have a video resume. That's what ePortfolios can really do, is more than just handing in a cover letter and a resume saying, here's a couple pieces of paper, this is why you should hire me, you can build an ePortfolio to really display every aspect of your professional and academic achievements. It's really much more thorough than a resume. Pictures, video, links to other websites, links to your blog, links to your showcase, things you've done, PowerPoints, documents, you've written, you've created, graphs, charts, everything you need. Any questions? You can create graphs and charts on that too? Well, no, 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 no. If you have some in, oh, like oh, okay. in, Word, in okay. Word or in Excel, you can put them right here in showcase, and it even get your little description. You could say, uh, "I did a study over, say, your sociology major. I did a study over divorce rates in domestic abuse houses. Here's my findings." You put it right there. They can click on it, download it, and they can look at all of your numbers, your statistics. It's that simple and that easy, and they can see the actual work you've done. So, questions? It was that way last semester, too. Except for Jeremy. He was really well, yeah, Jeremy was, yeah. And Ashley sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and Dane, of course, thinks out on us. Oh, goodness. <laughs> A terrible word to use for that. <laughs> no questions? Uh, Nathan, I have a question. How do you get a prospective employer to look at Epsilon? Do you tell them you have an e-portfolio, or is that through? Yeah, but we'll, yeah. A yeah. lot of places actually, like you know, like Monster.com is like a pretty good place for searching yeah. for jobs, and they have like an online resume tool where you just like, you know, either shoot them the link to it, or you know. Just, yeah, I mean, you know. What was that thing? Monster.com. Monster.com. Yeah, LinkedIn's another good one, and with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional social network. I just signed into LinkedIn, and it allows people, but yeah, you got e-portfolios. You can just fill out any e-portfolio, and then if you send in a physical resume, you can also say, I have an e-portfolio, here it is, and they can go and they can look at it. It'll provide, you know, uh, supplementary material to your resume. They're able to see, you know, different certificates and awards you've received, work you've already done, whether it be internship, a volunteer position, classes, I mean, you can just send in a resume, but if you show that you've done a lot of extra work, besides just writing up a resume, that'll really make you more appealing than any employer. Really. Especially if they're technologically savvy. Especially. And most, a lot, most people. A lot of people. Working. 
yeah, more and more technologically savvy. That's why you have the presence of sites like LinkedIn, LinkedIn and Monster, is because a lot of employers are relying more and more on technology. I mean, most technology is free. And if you have something that's free that can cut costs, why not use it? So most business people are going to start using technology more and more. Um, universities are going to start using technology more and more. If you're in school for the next five to six years, you're going to see a radical shift in the way education is presented to you. You're going to start seeing professors requiring you to sign up to Twitter, so that way you can receive updates in the class via Twitter or even pop quizzes via Twitter. Uh, Dr. Jose Bowen, uh, he wrote Teaching Naked, came to the university back in November, and I attended his workshops. And a lot of things he said is that businesses and colleges need to start getting more tech savvy, or you're going to start losing profits. That's just the way it goes. You're going to start losing what? Losing profits. Profits. It's oh. just you're going to start shutting down if you don't start utilizing all of these free technologies that exist. What do you think of like MIT's initiative to uh, just post all of free content online? Yeah, free education and just, like, online. Have people pay for certification, essentially. Yeah. No. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. I think. <laughs> no class at all. <laughs> I think. I, I think it's. I think it's a, a unique idea. I think it's a good idea. But one problem. I see in doing things like that in all, in all online classes is when you don't have that face time with the professor, you kind of don't have that, that emotional connection in a way, if you will, so you don't kind of feel that level of so you mean it's more professional? Yeah, it's more, well, <laughs> not really that, it's more, it's more, it's less personal, if anything. If you don't have that, those, those eyeballs and that face looking at you every day, you're less apt to do the work unless you really, really want the certification in that field. So, if it, you know, for highly ambitious people, I think it's a good idea. But I mean, if you're not willing to sit down on your own time and spend a lot of free time doing yeah. it, and you just want to watch your DVR all day, it's not going to work. So. And a lot of students that do that, sorry, but do the virtual college route, wait until the very last minute to do all their work. Yeah. I don't think it's helpful. I mean, it, it, it has its place, it has its niche, but one problem with e-learning is it's still in its infancy. What it's, about like, uh, I mean, I, I'm like just talking about yeah, this yeah, one, yeah. Out, whatever. But like you've got people like Richard Feynman who taught at MIT, Noam Chomsky taught at MIT, and you know, like it's those people who are doing those online lectures. Mm -hmm. And so like when I was in a physics class, we would actually watch those lectures to clarify what our professor was saying because we didn't understand what he was saying. And it actually was clarified. Yeah, no well, one, one, no what, no one. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I, mean, I just thought that was cool. Yeah. No, it is, it is really cool. That. And actually one. Yeah, we figured out that you can draw a perfect circle on the chalkboard by watching that guy do it in a particular way. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's actually one area um, that e education and e-learning is moving into is it used to be I am the professor, I am the gatekeeper of the information. You guys have to figure out what you need to know in order to get a good grade. Now it's moving into, okay, here's what we need to learn. Bring me a video that exemplifies this, and if you can prove to me that that video fits this topic, then I'm un I can see that you are understanding what you need to learn. I can tell that you're learning, you understand it. And by using technology, you're able to really gauge if people understand things. Let's say you're teaching Shakespeare. You say, okay, we have the Taming of the Shrew. Other than the 10 things I hate about you, I want you to go out and find a video clip or a movie or something that is exactly like Taming of the Shrew or similar to a scene in Taming of the Shrew. If you can prove to me that you can identify the elements, the tropes of Taming of the Shrew, I can tell you're learning and you're understanding the content. So that's really why e-learning and education is going, is because you can get education for free. You don't have to go to a classroom to get it. Uh, one thing uh, that really struck me as interesting is Dr. Bowen said, a student can wake up at 9 a.m. say, I really don't want to go to class. What are we learning today? Covalent bonds. All right, smartphone, Google, covalent bonds. There's the information. I'll bookmark it when the exam comes around. I'll go read it. We go back to bed. Bye. Bye. Once people realize they can get education for free, I mean, well, it's like the, the shift in the digital divide. You know, they talk about that as a major theme, like how we have to uh, redo like institutional structures to like basically deal with the the new way that kids are learning now. Yeah. Like 40 years ago, they were audio. 
we're audiovisual, and now this generation after us essentially is primarily visual. Like, it's primarily is visual. Is that what they're trying to transition into? In a way, yeah, because then you got to think uh, it's rapid fire. I look at my computer screen and I have one, maybe two tabs open. I look at my fiance's computer screen and she has like 17 tabs open and she's managing all 17 of them when I'm having trouble juggling two. <laughs> so th there is definitely a divide and uh, that's where technology has to come in, really, is in trying to understand how students work. Um, but as for ePortfolios, uh, it's a really good way. And if you get on LinkedIn or you get on Monster, uh, you can connect with professionals. If you intern, that's a good way to connect with professionals. Connect, hook up with them on LinkedIn, and then when they're on LinkedIn, you can send links to your ePortfolio. You can send links to learning management systems you've used. You can send links to your blogs, different things like that. Uh, if you really build a nice kind of social web for yourself, so here's you. <laughs> You've got your uh, ePortfolio, you got your uh, LinkedIn, you got your blog, resume, and several other things. You can start building essentially a Frankenstein digital monster of your qualifications for a job, and you can basically walk up to an employer and just say, here it is, smash. <laughs> and employers will be impressed if you have that much qualification for a job. So. And you need to sell yourself. And one of the things yeah. I like about this is that you're networking with other people through your blog and stuff, so you're finding out about jobs and potential avenues that you can pursue. Yeah. So. That is I, I mean, when I logged into LinkedIn, it automatically told me, oh, here's people at Fort Hayes that you, you might know that are on LinkedIn. Uh, Mrs. Wilson brought up her name, brought up my German professor's name, brought up Provost Gould's name, like that instantaneously. They're just like, oh, hey, people that can help you professionally, sign them in. So it's going to start doing more and more. Is that what that thing was that you sent me, the LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay, I'll click on that. Yeah, I didn't even know that it was going to send anything out. I thought it was just people of interest that I might want to keep it. LinkedIn's a little more confusing than Epsilon. I'll give it that one. So, any more questions? I know there's only one person in teacher ed in here, but um, having that connection with former graduates is crucial to me helping you find jobs. In the last four days, I've had six former students write to me. It's, it's just on email, okay, I'm not into the other stuff, the blogs or whatever. But I was able to take that information and send it to the three people who are student teaching now because there are jobs available. And that's, you need to find out where the jobs are, who your employer is going to be, learn something about the institution, the place that you are applying to, sorry to end the preposition, um, to find out something about to sell yourself because that's really all it is is you are selling yourself and saying that I am better than this person Yeah, and the more of a digital uh, footprint. Yeah, you leave The more you'll be noticed Because it, everything is flowing together Digitally on the internet. It's and that's why if you go think of your favorite website How many of your favorite websites have? little links that say have Facebook logo, Twitter logo, whatever logos. I mean, just follow us here, follow us there. Sign up here, sign up there. It's all just flowing together, and it's getting crazier. I mean, I woke up today, and I even had a post on my Facebook timeline for uh, some product. And Facebook was like, we thought you'd be interested in this. How do you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, they're, they're tracking your you know, your interests and everything on social media, and eventually, well, on every race, but eventually it'll get to a point where you have a digital entity, and the more you build yourself up as a product to employers, the better you'll be. I mean, I've started to learn, I'm learning German, and over the winter break, I started to learn Chinese, because I wanted to be able to say, hey, I know three languages, hire me, please, 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 please. And I started to learn Chinese for free, just on iTunes. It's good on iTunes, you can learn languages iTunes? I didn't know that. Yeah, there's podcasts where you can just learn hmm. all sorts of things. Because I was telling you about the Rosetta Stone, we were talking about Spanish. <clears throat> um, anyway.
Uh, but iTunes can do that for free. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Isn't that something you want to pursue, Sam? Kelly? Yes? Uh huh. Adam? Uh, he's kind of a butt, he doesn't know. <laughs> Adam, that's terrible that I said that. With the guest speaker? Good and it's recorded. Oh, and it's recorded. Yeah, we have that's it. That's right. Oh, okay. So I will always be known for saying butts. Okay. <laughs> I think this class has heard worse. Um, anyway. All right. Well, thank you very much. Any questions? Pump in for information if you can. Do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, thank Nathan. You.